But it's brought in as uh, Somnath Ji is saying. I will also request you to look at the tweets of our Honorable Prime Minister Modi Ji. He has given tweets on Chandrayaan 1, what to brought out, what was accomplishment of Chandrayaan 1. He also brought out tweet on Chandrayaan 2, what are the scientific outcome, the accomplishment of Chandrayaan 2, and also hoped that Chandrayaan 3 will go well. Kindly look at his uh, last uh, two days of tweets. He has brought out with very well. Thank you. No, no, that is an essential part of any yeah. any mission. It's very much different experience. You have a suite of experiments. Why do you choose these three or three? See, experiments are chosen based on, on scientific the, objectives. Of mission, yeah. We have a scientific team headed by one of our former chairman who looks at it. And in beginning of Chandrayaan program, there was a scientific goal set. What you want to find out, what is unique that you can find out, what others have not done. And that is how we found out water on the moon on Chandrayaan 1. Because in a, yeah. in, a, in a way, not only is this mission comparatively better than many other missions by the other countries, also it is totally indigenous. And as we mentioned Chandrayaan 1, though they may have landed before us, but the discovery of water on the surface of the moon was brought by Chandrayaan 1. Now this is going to go one step further. More so because it's landing on the South Polar area, Correct. where you have different kinds of craters and all. So it's just moving from one level to the other level. Same you? Yeah. Yes. Sir. We all know how the Prime Minister is interested in this uh, space research. Did the Prime Minister speak to you guys uh, after the successful launch? Oh, no, he, 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 he's, he's abroad, he's treated. And, uh, is he going to be there on 23rd and the landing happens? That we'll work out. But of course, uh, uh, I have no hesitation to say that all this. Uh, uh, has been possible also because there is a huge lot of individual indulgence by Prime Minister Modi. This whole ecosystem has developed because in the last four five years, uh, beginning from you know opening the space sector to the private players, then putting in place an interface called In Space uh, to deal with the private sector to coordinate with the private sector, then putting up a PSU called New Space uh, India Limited. So all this is an ecosystem which has supplemented the resources, both human resources as well as financial resources. Now the 140 odd startups, private startups who are working over here in collaboration with ISRO are also actually contributing, both human resource wise, because there is a huge lot of young talent happening there. So it's, it's an ecosystem which has made this task easier. And that's also because the Prime Minister Modi has always been forthcoming as far as our uh, ex experiments and missions are concerned. You have to use the mic, otherwise we can't hear. Yeah. I said congratulations to you and your team, but I'm a bit confused about this. Why did you not have a full pitch orbit at this time? Is propulsion module, is spacecraft, and I'm a bit confused about it. And the second question is, uh, what is the progress you have made on human space flight program? And okay, we will, yeah. yeah, we will limit to the Chandrayaan 3 today. Human space the okay, the, on the orbiter I will answer, sir. Orbiter is still there, orbiter is orbiter. That is what we were saying in response to the earlier, yeah. uh, what you said. See, the orbiter had scientific experiments last time. This time it doesn't have scientific experiment, but we added one towards the last time. So it doesn't it doesn't have a function of being an, in orbit and do any active function. That's why we don't call it orbiter, and it doesn't have a relay function as we have envisaged last time for communication. So our Chandrayaan two orbiter is going to do that function. So in view of this, there is no need of really an orbiter. We need only a propulsion module to reach up to the moon. Hence, there is a need of. So I believe your confusion on that topic is over. The focus this time is on in situ <coughs> experiments on the surface of moon. And therefore, the agenda is set like agenda that. Agenda is, yes, different. You have to use mic. Mic, mic. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
Okay, let us all clap. You see, if you, if, you, if, you recall, if you recall my words, I said confidence they have inherited as legacy. If you see the pictures of Sarabhai carrying launcher vehicle on the carriage of a bicycle with uh, no resource available and people like you and me singing nursery rhymes sitting home, Chanda Mama Durke, and uh, USA preparing to land on the surface of the moon, this is early 60s, they are already preparing, Apollo series have started. So the huge lot of confidence is there, but what is appreciable is that it is not a misplaced confidence. The confidence coming out of substance and the acumen that is inherent to our Indian talent. Can I ask uh, our uh, in-space in chairman, Dr. Pawan Goy Kumar Goyal, to answer? You can, you can from there. Sir. Can you answer? No, no, he's saying the transfer technology, Goenka. Pawan, Mr. Pawan, about saying the startups in the transfer technology, how would you accommodate them? That's what he was asking. See, uh, ISRO has a treasure of technologies. And as these startups are coming up, uh, it makes a lot of sense for them to not, not redevelop the technologies. And ISRO can transfer technologies to startups, and startups will take it and take it forward. Uh, and ISRO right now is very aggressively identifying technologies that they will transfer. And in this space, is only facilitating the technology transfer. All the technologies will be coming from ISRO. Okay, yeah. But, uh, Uh, in this special lecture, no, the, 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 the space is open for private sector, yeah. uh, <laughs> not the private sector is open uh, for people. What are the kind of key developments that the private sector industries have uh, contributed for this mission? Can you name some critical components that were provided by them or some companies that were invaluable to this uh, mission? Uh, if I start listing, it will be huge. Just a few, sir, just a few. Okay, well, the first thing to say is in the rocket which took place, that LVM3 rocket, 85% of the money spent on the rocket is in industry. Okay, the, only the value of the rocket, just 15% of the work was done only within ISRO. This is first point. So to corroborate it, the entire materials, the entire manufacturing, everything that you are seeing outside the rocket, also inside the rocket, is also coming from industry. The only the processing part, final processing part, quality control, the mission design, the final operations only done by ISRO. Another thing is there are industries now working within ISRO's facilities now. It's called, our mission director used to have called GOKO, government owned company operated mode. There are many facilities operating to produce critical systems inside. Tomorrow they will go out and do it on their own. They are supplying. For example, in the R of systems that is there in this launch vehicle, nine, eight out of the nine systems in this rocket is produced in, in private industries in a GOKO mode. And many things in that are done in such facilities. So, industry's contribution is very enormous. Coming to the Chandrayaan-3 also, the hardwares which are visibly there, are many of them are from industries, but the industry con contribution in satellites are actually lower, uh, not as much as the rocket today. Sir, so my question is, what is the cost of this project? And uh, while many developed countries at the moment dominate this particular space, uh, yeah, I'm on, I'm on your right, sir. Where? Yes, I'm on your right. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. My question is, what's the cost of this okay. project? And number two, why many developed countries dominate this particular space, technology and expedition? No, I think, I think the cost, uh, okay, you have a second part. Yes. The, the, as far as the cost is concerned, I think it's, by now it's been quite often eaten, it is a 600 crore or so, slightly more than that. Uh, which is not much considering the kind of stake and uh, prestige and uh, the outcomes uh, involved in this mission. Uh, how important is this for India to develop expertise in this area when many would argue the same funds could be utilized for other key areas like poverty alleviation? No, there are, there are I think I'll, your answer, your question of course is well taken because um, it might be occurring to many minds, but there, it could be answered in two parts. A, 
I think again the credit goes to this last nine eight nine years of the Modi regime. We are now no longer confined to only launching of rockets. Space technology has virtually entered every Indian household, every sector of development, whether it's the construction of the rail tracks, smart cities, roads, buildings, telemedicine, uh, tele-education. Some of your most ambitious and successful success stories are based on, uh, on, on space technology. Like, for example, the Swamitva program, which is a very ambitious program, unique of its kind in the world, where you are doing the mapping of the farms and the land areas, the market. Secondly, the COVID, the vaccination, uh, the vaccine transportation, etc., was guarded by the drones and the. So, that is one part, immediately. Now, the other part is how would it help uh, a citizen by, you know, going up to the moon? You see, India now is no longer the India of what it was about 10 years back. World looks up to us to take a lead. And that has also happened because earlier on, the world did not take us seriously as far as the. You know, some some of the more uh, progressive concerns are concerned, like the concerns related to climate change, concerns related to energy. They thought we were all beset with our own problems of droughts and floods, and we didn't have the capacity to look beyond. But it was Prime Minister Modi who, in COP26, took the made the pledge that we would be net zero by 2070. So now we are actually contributing hugely to the to the uh, to the. Uh, well-being of the mankind as a whole. So we are, have become a part of the global world and we have assumed responsibility which is of a much larger nature, which in the process will not only give us scientific uh, supremacy, but also enable us to play a role both for, the, for bringing in ease of living for our own citizens as well as citizens of the world as a whole, in keeping with the mantra that Prime Minister gave the Mr. Vasudev Kutumbakam, which is also the G20 theme. So I think there's a whole lot. And now in the kind of uh, you know, uh, ecosystem that we li live in, we cannot be isolating ourselves. If the rest of the world starts moving to the moon, we cannot delay our march. And, and the other part is that now we are at par. We are at par with the, the, the countries like USA. It's no longer that they would have adopted the technology, apply it, popularize it, and then we adopt it, as we did in case of television or computer. Now we are also, all, we are at the same, uh, same step of the letter. No, thank you. What what we'll do is we will have. We will say one question about that. I have said that 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 I have so we are actually living up to that and I am sure they are going to carry forward this mission. Uh, we, will, we will have a short uh, now. I will request all the mission directors, project center directors join on board. Goenga ji, play also play. No, you can, you can discuss with the directors. You can ask them specific questions. Mission directors are going to be available. You can discuss with them on technical matters after the minister has left. So please wait. We will, we will have to, he has to leave now. Okay.